Hi, everyone. This is Ed Mabry with faithbyreason.net. Hey, Ed, and all this is Pastor Jerry Gerarda with Lighthouse Christian Church here in Novato, California, only about 20 minutes away from the beautiful bridge that's uh, in, uh, in Ed's uh, video here. <laughs> yeah, I had to use a background because I, I got kicked. My wife kicked me out of the office. She has a meeting. So that's just so I'm downstairs. I just want to have a better background than like all the stuff you'd see in the house. Well, I'm, I'm in my home office, which is actually also a laundry room. I turned <laughs> off the, you know, the, the washer and dryer because it just creates distraction. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking you win on the background. You clearly okay. win on the background. Well, I've got to come up. I need to get a custom background, maybe even something like, <laughs> like faith by reason focus, or maybe just like a church, some kind of background that's going to like yeah. have everyone in the right state of mind for these, hey, these episodes. So I, I, I think I'll see what I can download. Well, there's a lot of great images. I don't know that you can read the the Golden Gate if that's at sunrise. It looks yeah. like it, the sun's in the east. That's sunrise. That's just spectacular. But anyway, good to see you, brother. You do. So I um, want to talk about your latest message, and you're continuing your series on worshiping God, particularly worshiping God with finance, which we talked about a couple of episodes ago. But you're continuing that because we serve a generous God who obviously wants us to be generous because we're supposed to emulate him. That's our whole role is to emulate Jesus, to emulate God. So why don't you just uh, talk through um, how you position that and what you talked about um, in the, in the uh, last message. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Thank you for that introduction too. That's perfect. That's the message. I think we're okay. done. Oh, no, okay. we, we can no, go. All right. I know. I'll give, I'll give a little more specificity as, as I did at church because it's, it's so wonderful to think about how, we praise our Lord. We thank our Lord. He's gener- He's given us all things. He's given us his very son to redeem us. He's given us eternal life. He's given us this earth and these blessings and opportunities. The generosity of God just is absolutely overwhelming at times. He's incredible. And you're absolutely right. In scripture, it's clear that he wants us to continue to grow up in Christ and to operate more like Christ, who also was with his own very life, giving of his own life and everything that he did, just the great model of generosity. So this is our principle that we're talking about, even as it relates to finance. But if you look at some of our key scriptures, uh, the first point is this, because God is generous and he wants us to be generous, who are we supposed to be generous with? Number one, we're supposed to be generous with God himself. Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your crops. So even from a financial standpoint, the Lord wants us to participate with him, support the things that he's up to, and even do that with our finance, not as a second thought, as, a, as, a, as an afterthought, but as the very first thought almost of the week. Hey, set aside at the first part of the week, other scripture says, uh, for the work of the church and what God is doing. So that's a premise Luke chapter 6, verse 38. I love this verse because it encompasses a lot. It says, give, and it will be given to you, yeah. right? This is the Lord. This is the Lord talking. He says, a good measure, right. pressed down, shaken together, and then running over will be poured into your lap. I love the graph imagery of that. Just th- these blood, if you're, if you're you know, generous man, I'm just going to pour out blessings. They're going to run all over you and run all over your lap (laughs) or with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So once we're in God's kingdom, once we have a relationship with Christ, he's going to prompt us through the Holy spirit to become more like him, even in generosity, even with the resources that God has given to us. And now there is an equation. The more we're like him and the more generous we are, the more God will pour out his blessings on us. So I love that principle. The the second thing is that the Lord really does encourage us to give generously for the work of the church. There's scripture in New Testament and Old Testament that relates to supporting what God is doing in a corporate context. 1 Corinthians 16, 2, Paul writes, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. God intended for those who are a part of the ministry to be supported by those who are blessed by the ministry. 
um, and to want to support it and encourage it and expand it. Malachi chapter three, verses eight to 10 uh, are some really uh, profound verses that have to do with Israel in the Old Testament. And it actually reads in a pretty dramatic way, will a mere mortal rob God? Right. Yet, yet you rob me. This is, Ed, this is, this one, when I first read it years ago, I stopped and reread it. I said, oh my goodness, yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, the Lord responds through the prophet Malachi. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And then he goes further and says, test me in this. We don't find many places in scripture where God says, test. in fact, often it says, don't test the Lord, right? right, right. But here he actually says to Israel, you guys are messing up. You haven't done what I've commanded. There's consequences for that for the whole nation and everybody in the nation. And so now test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. The, so there's the negative, there's the critical side of, gosh, guys, you're not measuring up and you're falling so far short, it's actually bringing a curse upon you. If you open your hearts, if you do what I command and you set aside financially with tithes and offerings, what I instructed you to do oh my goodness i'll just open the floodgates mm -hmm. so i love that positive side of the equation uh, so the pretty strong words to the you know to israel in that generation but i see consistency between old testament and new testament with how god wants us again to operate with generosity to support what he's doing in the world through israel in the old testament and what his commands are, and then also the church in the New Testament. But see, this goes far beyond that, because then God tells us we're supposed to be generous with our families. Mm. First Timothy 5 8, anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. We have to take care of our own. That's, that's a testimony of the Lord and the love that we have that we're going to extend and sacrifice. If family's in need, we need to be there. We can't leave that to others. We need to do that personally. And, and, and we're commended if we do it. And we're actually chastised if we don't do it. And we have so many people in our assembly who have done an outstanding job looking out for their own family members who might be in a place of need. There's things going on or even right now in our assembly that I'm very aware of where I, I just give encouragement and I praise the Lord and I thank the Lord for people who have that generosity and are following God's heart and are loving on their own family members who are in a place of need. But it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that, Ed. It, it goes to uh, the fact that we're also supposed to look out for church family members. Galatians 6.10 says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Mm -hmm. So this is a more general thing. Let's do good to all people. This is a great principle. That's generous. That's loving. We want to help and bless everyone, but especially to those who belong to the family of believers who God has called us to be connected with. In, in our lifetime, in this part of the world, in our neighborhood, here's our church family we need to look out after each other, right? And this is something that we see happening at the Lighthouse and other churches are doing the same where we really have to go out of our way when we recognize a need to say, okay, is family there, blood family stepping in to help? And oftentimes they are and praise God. And then we support. If they're not, or somebody doesn't have that close family, we need to be there for each other. And we do that through the lighthouse in so many, so many ways. So I'm, I'm proud of our assembly, but I want us to continue to grow up into right. this full generosity and not looking at it as a burden or a sacrifice, because it actually is, but looking at it as an opportunity to bless others with financial support if needed and other things. So, uh, so those are some of the things that we covered and, uh, you know, the, the last thing was really that the Lord asked us to go beyond that, too, and to reward even those 
who maybe aren't part of our family or a church family, but those who are in need in our own community to help those who are the poor or less, you know, have less advantages than us. And there's a lot of great scripture that sh that's shared in the Old Testament and Christ himself in the New Testament. And then God will reward us for doing that and honoring him. That's, so, that's yeah, a lot. yeah, yeah, there's a there, lot. There's a lot. But yeah. if, if I were if I were to encapsulate it, I, we, but like we said at the very beginning, you know, we're supposed to we're, we're made in God's image. We're supposed to emulate God in his nature and in his actions. And when you really get down to like what our ultimate goal, heaven, that's, you know, that's where we will, will be, you know, after we're, after we're done with this life, we'll be in heaven. What is heaven going to be like? What's well, going to be a community? It's going to be a marriage. It's going to be a family. It's going to be a community. And yeah. so I think what we're doing on earth, a lot of the things we do on earth are meant to emulate Yes. what things are going to be like and in heaven we're all going to be one body we're going to be you know god will be taking care of us and we'll taking care of each, of, of each other and i think i think that's really what he wants us to do is emulate his will god's will is for is for us to be a community he, yes. our family that's how he made us and and that's really what, what what you're saying is all about that taking care of each other taking care of of your community and if we do that then we are being what god wants us to be we're, we're fulfilling his will it, absolutely. And as we do that, we see the blessings in it, even in real time. It's like even in this season, right? We're a small church, right? The Lighthouse in Nevada, California. We're not a mega church. We're not in a metropolis. Yeah. We're in a, in, in a, in a suburb. Uh, we've got a precious church. God's doing such a great work here. But this church is growing the season for many important reasons. I believe that one of the reasons God is producing additional fruit and bringing new people to the assembly and new ministries is because we are stepping forward in faith and also responding with a level of generosity. There's a heart to serve and help each other. And other people see that and want to be a part of it. There's, an, there's opportunities that we're embracing, like with our loaves and fishes ministry, to provide for those in the community. We've reached out to those that are homeless, and God has brought us into connection with many. Some have become a part of our fellowship. Some are getting support from our fellowship, and we're honored to do that. And we see God wanting to expand that. And then we look at other things. There's a church in Cuba that we have a connection with, and there's just such need at the basic level of food and medicine. So yeah, we're not a wealthy church, but you bet we're going to step, step forward and send funds through Katie and, and Julie and Azabio, you know, who have those connections and where we had a mission trip, you know, uh, a couple of years ago with our youth group to Cuba, we've established a connection now that we've got this real connection with people in real need. And yeah, we can help. And we'll help some more. But we're doing that in other areas of the world and supporting other ministries, too, as well as ministries right in our own backyard, like the Marin Pregnancy Council with Robin Strom and the great work with at-risk families with newborns and how to come alongside. So we, we want to model these things out, too, and continue to grow in our faith and our own generosity in Christ. Uh, as we preach it, we want to follow it. We want to act on it personally and through our church. And we're not looking for any pats on the back, but we are looking for what we can do. Sure. to emulate Christ, like you were saying, and, um, and this wonderful, you know, season never ending this eternal life and, and, and life in paradise and heaven. Uh, that's just going to be so remarkable where all these things and the love of Christ and the general is just right at the core of all of it, you know? Yeah. So that's our message for this week. And we're, we're honored to look into scripture and see how, again, how, God is so generous, and he explains throughout scripture how important it is for all of us to be generous. So great. Another wonderful message. Why don't you uh, tell us about what's upcoming? What, what will you be talking about uh, this coming Sunday? Okay, so this Sunday going on with our worship series, and this Sunday we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, honoring the Lord and in, in, in worshiping him together. Mm. See, there's the beauty of being together uh, in a church and an assembly, but just in ministry and life, doing things together. 
And so God, through that, just has some really important examples from scripture and instructions as to how to do that. Even things that go into like our worship services and our times of fellowship on Sunday and how important it is to, you know, see certain elements there of praying unto the Lord and, and focusing on his word and uh, singing unto him and, and also having wonderful fellowship. So we're going to look into the examples from scripture and uh, the instructions from scripture and the beauty of why God has us doing this together. So. Sounds great. So I want to encourage everyone who is watching right now to please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel for, for Lighthouse. Uh, just by hitting, hitting that subscribe button, also share and like so that more people can, can be exposed to these wonderful messages. Also go to a lighthousechurchnovato.com um, and, and you can actually uh, get uh, lots more information about Lighthouse Community Church, a uh, Christian church, excuse me, and learn more about the community that we're helping in all the different programs that you've heard here and, and elsewhere. And of course, uh, and visit locally if you have the opportunity. Yep. And so, yeah, Jerry, I... Again, wonderful message. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks, brother. Really appreciate it. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Yes. And again, God bless us all as we just continue to follow Christ and grow. In all right. We'll yeah. talk to you all next Thanks. time. Okay. Bless you. Bye-bye.